Oh, right. Welcome back. It's going to be the map number two in the first semi-final here at Assembly. The Asus ROG CSGO Tournament. Obviously, we have LDLC come out on top on Inferno. In a game where first half you thought it's all over, but no, nope, North Academy decides to come back into it after very well some interesting turn of events, but eventually they do they, they come through, and it's it's nice for Tommy to actually join us here. Decided to be late this morning, uh, as he is very unprofessional. So you know, listen, uh, listen, I apologize I, to all of you guys out there uh, for on, on Tommy's behavior. Listen, I don't know what you're talking about, but if you can remember that we just casted the previous map, maybe the old old age is really settling in a little sooner than we thought. Might want to get you checked for uh, for Alzheimer's. That, I, I think that can happen in the uh, in the late 30s, which is you know I believe what you're hitting now. So anyway, uh, we are we are gonna see uh, see the second map of this series, and it looks like we're actually finally going live. So you know, timing timing seems to be on our side. So let's just jump back in, right into the game. We shall. It's going to be North Academy starting T side. Um, it is their map pick. So LDLC getting the benefit of choosing what side they wanted to start. Let's see, uh, it's only going to be armors here for, for the north side. No grenades whatsoever, so nothing fancy to be expected. It's just going to be wolf back in together, try to use the power, firepower from the Glock in their advantage. But as we can see from the minimap, there's a lot of aggression here coming from the LDLC side. No, they're starting really aggressively. The problem is north are clearly waiting for it. That's why they're posted up in very defensive positions, and they're going to catch LDLC pushing now. First kill going there, Maniac's going down, and they know Alex is over, over in playground, so he's going to be in trouble trying to survive. Yeah. Acorn right now is very aware of Alex's potential positioning, and the Devil coming through connector, he's sandwiched, and Acorn is going to get that kill. Now it's going to cue Alex for a push from the fountain area. Duel outside of the picture right now, but still it is a big one. The bomb has made its way to the bomb site. Gets planted as well, so four and three advantage. Make that a four and two. Bumping down. Well, that's good work. That's an easy round for uh, for North. Yeah. Seemed like they were prepared for what LDLC was doing. They were clearly just holding for a push, which you know, not the not the sort of thing you normally expect CTs to do to push all the way, yeah, all the way towards T spawn. So maybe clearly well prepared for slightly, that pistol round. Yeah, you could say it's slight, slightly overextended by LDLC. You know, it's nice to be posted up towards the fountain, but, you know, if you start going all the way to T-spawn, there is a lot of danger in that. So forced by coming in from the Frenchman, it appears that Existence is finally giving up the op today, because he's the, he's the one buying armor and Toyin is actually saving. Yeah, he wasn't using Which, the op. Uh, judging from yesterday, seems like a, it's seems a, reasonable, like a good switch. Reasonable choice, you could say. However, as we can see right now, North Academy actually is well on their way to this beat bomb site. Right now, occupied by three of the LDLC players, but they are taking their sweet time on North Academy, just trying to bait a reaction from an LDLC. It's a bit of a tunnel vision approach from North because they're not clearing in, clearing any areas whatsoever. They're only attacking B that, without though. any information. But, but at least they're faking, yeah, faking that. But now they're sort of falling back and trying to trying to potentially start heading towards a bit of a bit of a weird approach to an anti eco round. Yeah, I mean, still do have a minute to play. Uh, they get the man advantage out of that weird play that they just did. So, all credit to them. They managed to capitalize now. They've gone all the way to playground. And yet to decide on where they want to go. They're actually going to be hitting back, I think, towards the bomb side. It, it definitely looks like they don't even know where they want to go. Yeah, the know, problem right? is yeah. there's only 30 seconds on the clock, so... A push into the site, if they lose any people early on, is going to be problematic. Cyclone's actually cleared A. Now they know that everybody's in B, but there's no more time. North have to go to yeah. B, right into LDLC stack. Lucky for them, though. They're the ones to get the kills, along with a team kill. A and J get rid of Vaso. Who yeah, that was game came alive in the second half of that Inferno game. He went 0-11 and 11 through the first half. I think he entered the game with like 18 kills. Speaking of zeros, uh, how did you feel about existence losing, losing a one versus zero? You know, I mean, we were discussing this. It was kind of a weird scenario because obviously we couldn't hear the bomb tech, so we didn't know exactly how much time he had. Eventually, you learned that obviously there was less than a second. You could say less than half a second left for him to be possibly defusing it. So maybe he was still looking for a defuse kit. I don't know, but but surely you have very the uh, interesting. ten second timer in, so you would know that you still got time, unless he was just unclear on where the bomb was planted. But yeah, you know that should be the sort of thing that an experienced player should pick up on the way to the retake. 
good. on the you'd, side. You'd, so you'd, you'd think so. So the first skill coming in for North, up in fibers as far as an interesting stack here. Cyclone has not seen the player boosted oh. up. He's playing. I must be playing on a four-three resolution because otherwise he would have would have been able to spot the player in that position. North getting one kill. Not a whole lot to write home about. Existence now the last man standing. And it's it's poised to be a 3-0 lead for the Danes. Yeah. <laughs> get an extra kill, but he's not gonna get much out of that. Borb gets the one with the Mac 10. And now here comes the first cup around. Obviously with LDLC investing into the second round, he's they will make some compromises here in the first weapon round. Less utility. Still weaponry though, it's gonna be enforced across the board along with the AWP on Toyno. But no mollies, no kits. So if it goes to an after plan, it'll think, make things a little more hairy for them. More making a lot of damage to the devil, pushing in the short straight away. Basso though, it's gonna be the one to get the opening kill on existence. Again, North very focused on the B side, not even showing presence anywhere. Else. Alex is pushing through, and this could be the flank that saves North, uh, LDLC rather, eventually. But only if Alex doesn't push through and get caught off guard by A and J, who is currently holding the connector door. Yeah, I don't see I don't see a reason for him to push right now. He needs to see the push come in towards the B bombs up before making a move, but he's actually pointing the idea. It's gonna be Maniac. I think they knew A and J's positioning pretty well. Hitting the kill, it's a 3 and 2 advantage now. The bomb has actually maneuvered all the way down the T stairs into uh, Connector, it appears. Now, Alex is clearly clearly afraid of the last terrorist walking from long. That's the one part of the part of the map that he hasn't seen. He's even checking to make sure they haven't walked into CT spawn. It looks like Maniac's gonna actually meet him there, just to double check that there's no terrorist. Having gone through, obviously in reality, North player's just going up Connector right now. Yeah. They're gonna see Alex in the banana area any second now. Dink coming here from Alex, but not able to get it to get the kill. So he was playing with an M4. Cyclone with that AK-47, able to get it. Two on two now. The bomb's gonna be going down, but Cyclone is down to 10 HP. It's gonna see Maniac who gets the kill. And there's another one coming from stairs. That's Toyno. That's gonna be able to see on the board with that defuse coming in. And that wound up being a costly round for, for LDLC at the very end. I mean, obviously they pulled pulled it back despite North getting the opening entry, but very tunnel vision approach so far by the Danish team. They really focused on just one site in, e in each of these rounds. They haven't even bothered showing presence on the other side of the map, so that's something they're going to have to change later on, or LDLC should easily pick up on that and just start over overstacking the B site. Well, still money in the bank for North to be able to buy fully into this AWP on a core. It's been a... Um He's been very capable with that weapon, especially yesterday. Showcasing that even though Mertz was the star on this lineup with that big green, he's able to do damage with it. No, he certainly uh, certainly does his job. Now, I mean, obviously the uh, the difference is that Mertz was a player that you build your entire game plan around. Sure. You know, takes you to the promised land and Acar's... And beyond. <laughs> so, yeah, Acar's done his job, but he's not the... Uh, he's not necessarily going to carry you by himself, yeah. which, I mean, so far hasn't been a problem because North's been looking fairly well prepared. And I think it was Hunden last night who told me that they actually practiced for about a week with this team, which explains that why they actually do look fairly prepared despite having two stand-ins. Indeed. Now, again, it's going to be very direct plays from North. They've taken over a short already. That's the room given by LDLC, who are playing past them say bomb site. Insistence along with Toyno here. Holding it, have it off on Toyno, so I'm gonna make a late push or try to get some info on what's actually happening. What does he know though? There's a member of North Academy, or two of them in, in the toilets. Similar to the previous round, North is all in on A this round. There's no one towards B. First kill going the way of Toynu. North is setting up with the uh, utility use, is just holding, holding them back currently. Trade, two kills traded, existence, he's behind the enemy lines, but he instantly gets killed. It's a 3v3 situation, it's all on Alex. Inside. He makes, it gets a kill, does a lot of damage, but we're gonna be a team situation. Another retake coming in, a very similar scenario as we saw in the previous round. 
Maniac. Find one, he gets off one on Cycron. All on A car with that AWP at that long position. I think he's gonna see the shadow. Maniac flash comes in. And the double peak from LDLC is gonna be doing the work. They did get the round, another defuse, but these rounds are getting very, very close, so there is still potential for LDLC to just their economy could be crushed here if they if they lose one of these rounds. Yeah, the problem for LDLC is they've been they've been winning very close rounds. We see the parents of some of the uh, some of the LDLC players here. In the crowd, sitting uh -oh. in the front row. Um, still low uh, low economy for LDLC though, so they really need to keep stringing rounds together. It's one more round loss and they're back to saving instantly. Almost no money left in the bank after this buy round, so lots of pressure on them. Be curious to see if, if North is ever going to go for sort of a map control type approach, because really they've just been tunnel yeah. visioning into a site from the get-go of the round, which... I mean, it's, it's understandable. A lot of teams play that way, especially without practice, but it's not at all like they played yesterday, mm -hmm. yep. which is the surprising part. Indeed, yeah, they were very, very good at just taking map control. Seems like a bit of a slow approach here from the north side, start things off. But again, LDLC, giving them the respect, playing quite passively on that A-bomb site. Oh no, on the off. Along with existence, just jumping around, trying to get info. Any of the North guys being anywhere near, but right now, most of them are actually in connector. They seem to be poised to take over this B turret. And LDLC is just bunkered into the bomb site, so there's there's almost no way to get a pick on them without actually committing or at least taking a taking a peek deep into a bomb site. Let's see. Here here's the uh, push from North. Looks like they're just executing from connector right into the site. Maniac is going to be the one to get the first kill. Radoff is going to be favoring the CT side right now. Moro finally gets one of the, a couple of the board for his team. Let's hold down a Cycron now in a 1 on 3. Should be a, uh, should be a tough one for him to try and win, considering the bomb is down as well. And he is surrounded by these CTs. They're just going to be patiently waiting. It's going to be need to be a play from Cycron here. Well, DLC doesn't need to make a move. So, you know, now in the right position, is going to get that shot. And it's going to get the round. Now at least it's about with three. That's one more than the last previous two. And finally, North Academy is not going to have money for a proper buy. So they're surely going for a save round of sorts. We'll see if they actually get upgraded pistols or any armor. But it's still going to be a save round. And that should finally allow LDLC to gain some control over the economic, economic situation in the game. We'll see. LDLC have been playing very safe, safe this far. So ideally, you'd like to see a similar approach on this round. Make sure that they don't lose any weapons. Build some... Build some kind of a safety net, but instead you see Existence taking a wide peek early on. Gain some information. I think he heard uh, heard a car running towards Playground, so they have that knowledge. But they do instantly fall back all the way into the A side. Yep. Well, for LDLC, like you said, there's two objectives. One is to win the round. Second one is try to maintain as many of them alive as possible by the end of it. More I mean, it, ready. Is, it is one of those rounds where you don't... Like, it's not a win for you if only two of your players survive. Indeed. That's not that's not winning this round. One of the uh, North guys right now is trying to, trying to get a peek. Short, but it's not going to get much. Patience right now is key for LDLC. Bunkering those bomb sites. The bomb has made its way in the toilets right now, but still very spread around are the North players. Just a slow round. Over a minute gone, minute and 10 seconds. Nothing's really happened. North players have lost a little bit of health. A course down to 10 points. But beyond that, they're just getting ready to hit the A side now. But LDLC should be ready for that. They got two players in the side, and Alex is quickly rotating as his devil now from B over to the A bomb side. Yeah, that's pretty much North just trying to get as many utilities away from LDLC. As the kill is coming in from A bar. Trade from Toyno, but the bomb is going to go down. That's already a win in itself for North Academy. They positions themselves directly here. Cycron oh, actually gets a three kill with a the sick eagle. round for Cycron. Gets Things. the first kill, just spamming, then turns around and gets two neat headshots. And that's going to close out the round just like that. Things do sometimes just turn on their head, don't they? Toyno now alone with 12 HP, running away, trying to survive and hold on to this AWP, but North are on that hunt already. Can, they can feel the, can feel the blood somewhere. They can smell it. The toy is surely gonna end up going down here. Moru needs to chase more aggressively. He can allow 
Toy needs to save this up for the next round, but he, for some reason, slows down <laughs> instead of going for the peak wide before the time runs out. Tactical pause coming in now from LDLC, and yeah, we made the point that losing a couple of players would already be the equivalent of losing that round, but, but yeah. that's, that's something else. That's, yeah, that's definitely going beyond it. It's, uh, that's going to break the bank for LDLC as well. So, huge blow to yeah. their economy and the way that they were finally getting their game going, building their game. Fantastic round from Cyclone. Yeah, I mean, that's, that, not, that's more, most you can ask from a player, getting a 3K with Deagle in that situation. And I mean, part of it is like, it's hard to blame the CTs in that scenario beyond not saving more utility to get out of the stairwell. But when someone hits headshots like that, there's little you can do to counter that. No. There's no bullet time in this game. Can't dodge him like that. So one op saved for, for LDLC going into the eighth round. Existence and Alex have a bit of money, so they could justify justify getting at least pistols. But beyond that, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to be looking at a double save if you if you purchase more equipment for this round. On the other hand, North, despite being broke the previous round, now actually have quite a bit of money saved up as a result of obviously winning a save round with little money spent. So and being able to save a couple of M4s from the previous round. So those those save round wins really do flip the economy up on its head. They certainly do. Now it's down to Toino with the uh, AWP. They're trying to make some plays here. Interesting to see how he plays himself. He seems like he's just going to go B, but they can see right now that's exactly what North is actually going to be attacking. They're coming through Monster pretty much with all force possible. Already went past Toino's position. Coming in, Maniac now is going to be bursting in flames. First kill goes away of Basso, but Toino ready and willing on AWP. Again, interestingly though, North kind of, they've taken over the bomb side, but they're still waiting. Now they finally go into the bomb side. So Toinu gets a second op kill on Akar, who's kind of holding back. And Alex is in the site, but he gets taken down. Now it's a 2v2, but Devil is at such low health. It's not going to have to be down on Toinu, but his position has been revealed. But he also knows where Borob is. It's going to be a game of Jiggle Peaks coming in here. It's a nice flick shot from Toino. Cycron being able to get that kill, but then also gets hacked and killed by Toino in the end. And the Diffuse comes in, has a kid and everything. That's back to back. Eco wins. And that was a really nice round by Toino. And that, that was all him yeah. getting those op kills. North took a little too long getting into the side after getting out of Monster. And the other, other problem they made is they kept taking duels instead of just smoking the CTs out and getting the bomb down at an earlier time. That was, that was I, I would say, more so, a, more so a function of North's mistakes. But obviously, Toynu capitalized on them. Indeed, he did. Nice, nice shots hit by him. Flips. Showcasing why he should be the one picking up that op on that team. He's got Devil Opping now, which is a, it's a curious choice. It's not really known to be using the sniper rifle rifles. He already saw, I believe, two North players sneaking up in water, and Akar is going to take this duel against Alex, and he gets the kill. Gets dinked along the way, though, but still, it's the advantage for North. They can already have that B short area. And though, this time around, we have an aggressive player in the form of existence all along. He's the lone player on that A bomb site right now. Actually, no one is actually in the site. Toino now making his way over. As we have most of North Academy stacked up in front of waiting to hit that A bomb site. Toinu's gonna be smoked. Oh, and now Toinu to spot an A car and he's a smoked out bathroom. So the rotation is sure to come in. Gets the uh, gets the first kill on the opposing opera. Okay. Interestingly enough, Toyno is actually going to be rotating. Surprisingly, Toyno is rotating in yeah. B. Existence. Existence misses a kill that's, that could be costly oh, for the his bomb. team. The bomb, though, it's down in toilet. Some For some reason, Cyclone actually goes for the duel. And they're all going to have to go back. Basta now, he gets a retaliation. There's Maniac in Connector as well. Things are just going back and forth this game. They're actually running it, running behind Maniac into Connector. They're going to be opening the door back and forth. He's going to be able to delay them quite long. 13, 12 seconds, actually. And this is a very interesting round of people running around. The bomb that's been dropped, actually. AJ goes down to that AWP. There's no time to plan anymore. It's going to be down and out here for LDLC. Morph gets the kill. 
And Toino gets one of the borrow as the time runs out. So he's not even going to get any money into this one. So that's an interesting one there. I mean, the guy with the bomb needed to just go and commit running into that A bomb site. You know, forget about existence. No, they, that's exactly what they needed to do. They needed to just ignore, well, existence, existence. That he was even there. Could have just passed by, booked it, and had someone hold the flank later on. Unfortunately, it was the bomb carrier that died even after existence missed out on the first kill. Great play by Toynu again, going for that peak right after the time expired, getting the gun out of the, uh, I, I believe, Borup's hands. Well, it's going to be a save round here for North Academy. Just will flash. We've seen this go in their way before. Obviously, they had upgraded pistols previous time when they managed to win. It's going to be a straight out plow towards the A-bomb and Existence just hiding in a smoke. They've gone past it. Existence gets the kill. Toino again chiming in with two of his own. Make that a third one. Toino's playing great, as our, yep. as our friend Alex uh, Machine Richardson might say. He's having a whale of a game. A whale of a game. At yeah. least I think it's Alex who always says that. That sounds like Alex. Whale of a game for Toinu, who's 15 and 4 after 10 rounds of play. Carrying force currently for LDLC. He's more than double the kills of everybody else on his team. Yeah. Including, obviously, the uh, hugely important 4 kill save round win. Now, this is going to be a buy round for North. They don't have all the utility in the world. They don't have enough. They don't have an AWP. But they've got enough to work with. Now, I like this change from LDLC though. They've, they're playing a bit more aggressive on this A bomb side now. They've kind of set the premise that they're playing passively on A, right? So maybe North could be short, taking some shortcuts sometimes, not using flashes properly, and therefore, you know, LDLC being able to maybe capitalize. So interestingly, Toynu here has forgotten to buy an armor, which could uh, could get costly if he gets yeah. if he gets tagged as he's aiming for a player. Not having armor is going to make the aim punch much worse. He's going to get some company, but he's going to connect on the shot. He's also getting surrounded right now. Another one coming from the other side. Jiggle Peaks happening. He's just baiting for the shot. Is the North Academy player? I think that's Borp. Another one on long, though. Toyn is in trouble here. There's no long. way out of this situation. He eventually gets killed by Borup. <laughs> Had a lot of patience for those jiggle beaks. That was that was good, but there's just no way out. Existence now is gonna see action from long any second. Oh, unfortunately, he's not gonna Somehow, be able to get any of those just kills. Connect on that kill. A card just bunny hopping out, but gets the kill nonetheless. Now there's two players in the side. It's Devil and Alex, both on the same side. Alex, and they're gonna have to get kills here. Keep their team alive, but Alex, they all line up. He gets two kills. Still deals a lot of damage, and Devil's able to get one and further delay. The final North player. Oh, and a jumping, <laughs> jumping UMP for. Uh, <laughs> Why not? To to close out the round. Obviously, Alex being the man of the hour in that round, sitting in the corner of the A site, getting two kills with the uh, M4. Bit of an unlucky timing in the way that North North wound up peeking the corner from Long and going up the stairs towards the A site where they lined up. Had there been even a one second difference, the second player probably would have been able to trade that kill, which might have been all the difference between winning and losing the round. But you know, little things do add up. And once again, we've got North Academy on a save round. Yep, LDLC. But with those deagles that we saw last time, were very dangerous. At this point in time, LDLC has managed to stabilize the situation. But as I say that, Borb comes in and uses that deagle. It's gonna be Boston just grabbing through a smoke, but LDLC is ready for it until a &J gets a kill. So it does become a two on two in the end. The boost coming in here from LDLC. Psycho can't have a shot here. This ain't connect on it though. It's just gonna live a &J with an M4 on the bomb side. And Existence he's gonna go down. Closes it out. The second kill in that retake situation. 8-4 to four score line now, and LDLC have won 8 of the previous 9 rounds after a 0-3 to three start. So not a lot going in North's way if we think more back to it. So they won the pistol round, they won 2 save rounds, and then they won psych rounds, deagle round in A. And beyond that, they really haven't had any success whatsoever. There have been a couple of close rounds, but Toyota has really been the one holding down the fort. Full buy round once again. We've got North Academy. Basso pushed very far away towards T spawn. You have Toynu there with the op and existence pushing through, claiming the area outside of Monster. 
but a well-placed fla flash from Basso effectively forces existence back, though. It looks like Toynu is still holding that, which gives a lot of information for LDLC. Yeah, it definitely does. See Alex here in toilets, also pushed up. It's definitely, we've seen LDLC change up the pace here on the CT side. Much more aggressive than they were in the earlier parts of the CT half. Alex is going to see some action. It's going to be AMJ connecting with those AK-47 bullets. Is that going to be the cue for North to just make a move? Instead, they decide to just hold back and let LDLC do rotations. Now we see some proactiveness here from the, the European side. So, you know, making some moves. Might be able to see more up here. Toilets, but it's not going to be able to hit that shot. Again, it's going to be North here. Now the Q has come. They are rushing into that A-bomb site. Very favorable situation currently for North, and surely they're able to convert this Maniac now on the flank. It's a nice headshot on Aether. This is now doable, but the bomb is going to be planted, and the plan is going to be towards CT spawn, which is going to make the retake really hard for the lone Swissman. Uh, well, he does know there's one on, on the left side of him. So if he can figure out there's nobody around the truck, and manage to isolate the situation now, we should mostly know where these two players actually are. Well, he could potentially force these into two individual one on ones. It's a player behind him, but he's going to bait someone out. Tapping on the bomb, he's going to get a fight with A&J and uh, go down. Almost with the flames. Yeah, there was no way he was going to be able to win that round with, with the uh, plant position that North Academy and got down. Money and look at the money for The disparity you see from them. Two guys with like 1.5k, 1.7k, and a guy with almost 10k. Not, have been... not necessarily sure that I agree with existence buying an op instead of sticking to an M4 and <laughs> dropping <laughs> dropping someone else a weapon. We saw this uh, this story play Let's out just be a honest couple here. of times Let's yesterday, and it, it wasn't pretty. It was abysmal. It was not pretty. It was horrible. Bass pushed towards long, <laughs> and not a lot not a lot done by existence. I mean, he got the first kill, but he surely would have been better off with an M4 in that close range situation. Mm -hmm. yep. So an off down now, another kill going the way of North, and now they're up in a 4v3 situation with minute and 25 seconds to spare. Indeed, they are. When you are LDLC in this situation, you kind of need to take some risk. You need to push. Get information. You're not just gonna win around being stationary unless someone just goes mad and gets like a massive multi kill. We've seen that from Toyno time and time again. And he is going to be the one that will see most of the action here. He's by the truck and the push is coming in from north eventually. They're setting up for the smokes. And as we speak, Devil has actually made his way to a bomb site as well. So there are two CTs right now. Toyno is not having a lot of luck with the timing though. And Devil goes down, so now he's in tremendous pressure. The multiple angles, he's not going to be able to connect. Maniac, again, alone in a 1 on 4 situation. 27 HP left. Impossible round for him. He's, he's rightfully trying to save the weapon in, uh, in T spawn, but looking at Nord's money, they've got enough that they can afford to lose one or two players and still get a roughly full buy for the final round, whereas LDLC have no money whatsoever, so Nord should be more than happy to go chasing after Maniac, which is. Which is what it looks like they're doing. A and J is gonna be the one who's gonna see Maniac any second now as he walks through Monster. There we go. A and J is gonna get that pick, and that's the weapon away from the hands of Maniac. As we can see from the scoreboard, there's not a lot of money here in the bank for LDLC. So we could see an eight-seven half here. Well, but then again, we've seen you know weird rounds go the way of you know the team that's been on Eco, for example. So. Don't cut him out yet. That's the that's the safety cushion that went in the pistol round and the two consecutive ecos gives you if you're north. Had LDLC gone up 3-0 to start this half, it'd be 11 to 3, and yep. it would be you know all about done. So that's the that's all it took. North was basically asleep for nine rounds straight, and then they came back towards the end of the half, and now it looks like they're gonna have a very favorable situation going into the second half to try to tie tie up the series. Oh, we have a wolf back here coming through long. Getting spotted though by Toino jumping behind the truck. And there's a smoke. Kind of blocks the bad smoke. There's a massive gap on the left side of it, but smoke nonetheless. The bomb, however, is still by the balloon, so they're not committing to anything. Instead, they're just going to be kind of waiting. A car with an AWP scoping in, trying to see what's going on in that defense. There's actually a CT jumping, so he could be getting a uh, freebie here. 
slow round for North, just waiting for LDLC to make a mistake, give him a pick somewhere. Hasn't exactly happened yet. 5v5, 50 seconds left. And this is the time where North needs to start slowly pushing towards the site to not run into issues at the last second. Yeah, indeed, especially now you have multiple CTs on this bomb plan. Devil actually spots a couple guys starting short. And a kill comes away of existence, but North Academy. 4 of green the situation. Just pushing in. Alex, the long warrior on the bomb side, gets two kills actually. Now it is at one on two. He's hiding in the smoke when Basta gets the kill. And it is going to be that 8 7 half. And that's a, that's a good half for North Academy. You're happy with seven rounds on T side of overpass. You've, def you've definitely given yourself a good chance to win in the second half. And this puts a lot of pressure for LDLC. Now, granted, the pistol round will be huge. If you win the pistol round, you get, a mu you get much closer and it becomes much more doable. On the terrorist side, it's generally very hard to rack up, rack up halves like this without some form of money control. Even if you think about this half, North basically had two half buys for LDLC two full Ecos, and the pistol. So to get these seven rounds, they actually won the pistol round, the one Deagle round, and I believe one proper full weapon round. Yeah. But if you win the right rounds with the right sort of economic situation, that's, that's quite enough to sort of convert into a reasonable half, and that's what they've done, and now they've got a good chance of tying up the series. Well, let's see what LDLC has in store for us here in the T-side pistol round to see what the buy is going to be like. There is a bit of utility in the hands of Alex. Absolutely no dabbing in the crowd. Spam. Getting kicked out of the crowd. Get out of the country. <laughs> we'll deport you. Your passport. Your citizenship. In the meanwhile, though, we have Devil all the way here. North Academy actually has a little bit easier. With the bomb and everyone else, though, are up towards this A bomb site more or less. Maniac spots one. Such a small connector. Again, a very, very slow round. LDLC just taking their sweet time, basically running across the map, trying to understand how North have set up their defense. But because they do have a fairly standard setup into the sites, it's just time to pick a spot. And it looks like they are going to be going B. And A and J is the player in a key position here by the barrels, is hiding his head. With Basso getting all the attention from the incoming terrorists. Here comes the push in. Mania has bought an A and J behind the barrels. He gets the first kill as well. And here comes the firefight. LDLC massively in the lead of it. It's only one left from the CTs. It's Acor. And they know where he is. The bomb has been planted. It should be close to impossible for him to clutch, barring any massive mistakes from LDLC. Still just get some kills here. Gets a fight with Troino. He's gonna win that one as well. That's a kit. That's helping him a little bit. Again, there are three of these T's here. All of them are in short. No way he should be winning this. It would be a, a massive, massive blunder for the LDLC guys, but no, it's not going to happen. Alex gets the last kill. And that is now both teams winning a, a pistol round of their own. Nice round by Existence, just running over the uh, B side defense with those three kills. A and J was so close to deciding that round for North. He saw the first two players run past him. He was set up to get at least two free kills and delay the bomb planner. But then finally, Maniac, the fourth person running in from Monster. Checks, uh, checks barrels as A and J puts up his head. Five eagles for the CTs, two armors, so they are committed to try and win this back. They got inspired by Cyclone's deal around. They're just all going in with it now. It seems like MDLC is just going to be walking to the bomb site. Devil is going to be the front man with that AK 47. There's three CTs on this bomb site. They finally have spotted one of them. First couple of kills are obviously going to be very, very important. If it's close away of LDLC as it does, that's going to open up the bomb site. They're going to be pushing in and fighting before even committing to a bomb plant. That's a smart choice, but there's a flag coming in. It's Acorn, and the Deagle is not paying off. He gets a couple of kills in the end, but that first shot could have been a kill with another weapon. Yeah, also could have been could have been dangerous had, uh, had he connected 
on the player who was low on health right here, or actually a little earlier, because that would have allowed him to re reload and take a new swing at things after. Smart way for uh, LDLC to just close out the round. They knew after he shot three or four Deagle bullets, he wasn't going to have enough to take out the whole team. So now, almost a full save round for North. And two players are going to be in a world of hurt for these grenades. One of them already did. Alex chasing after the other. Yep. He's and farming. he's gone. He's farming. He's been deleted from the server temporarily. He has now A and J. Fox Devil. It's going to be a push coming in. The jig is up. The seats have been spotted. The last guy is short. He's going to go down Alex with a nice but 4K with the uh, Mac 10. Farming some cash. Devil's having a having a rough game so far. He's only at a at a four kills total. Had a great game on Inferno, so you know he's uh, letting the others do the work now. He was also stuck on the uh, existence op train for a bit on the CT side. There's sure. there's uh, there's something in the secondary op that's just not working <laughs> out for LDLC. I think they just need to let that thing go. So the first full weapon round of the second half here for. Uh, for both teams. Alex. Or extends, he swings out from outside of the smoke, but Tony was not ready for it. He's able to fall back, but he's only got 20 points of health. And he's still in danger as he crosses, crosses past Banana, still makes it out alive. But just barely. Alex, though. He's here for blood, he's coming in, and he's gonna spot one of them. He gets Cycron, it's only now. Warp left there on the bomb site with that low HP. I need to have. A rotation come in. That's a nice flash. Alex though is gonna go down a core with a nice rotation. Devil and Maniac with kills for their own. Makes it a three on two and the bomb is gonna be getting planted here, but it becomes a two on two as A and J comes in. Gets a kill. It's just a back and forth right now. Hold down to Basso. Goes on the flank for a connector. And he's not gonna catch anyone coming from this way. Except he's heard Maniac. So that's one kill. Gets that, gets that out of the way. Devil's in bank. So where is the bomb planted? It's actually planted poorly for Devil. He's chosen a bad spot for where the bomb is planted. It's going to give Vasso a chance, but he doesn't realize Devil is going to be there. Understandably, because that's not a place you would go as a terrorist with that bomb plant. You would head towards Long. You would try to play towards Bathroom. Might have even considered the possibility of him being the second person on the flank with Maniac. Going all the way around to Bathrooms, but... That was a bad position for Devil for basically any other situation but the CT coming in through bank. Indeed. Save round now for North, 12 and 7. LDLC hope to get within three rounds of advancing to the grand final. Yeah. And Devil actually has experience of winning this tournament before. He won the uh, 2016 winner. 2016 assembly winner. Yep. Playing for LDLC White, I believe. Yeah. Was the uh, color scheme. Yeah, they have blue and white at the time. And I think Body was also on that team. Him and Body were the, uh, oh, yeah, the heavy hitters, so they were yeah, the uh, they were sort of the blue. breakout players. Antonio played for blue, wasn't he? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Right. I remember that both Devil and Antonio played for white, but no, it was your right. Body was the other one that played along with Devil. And unfortunately, they beat our team. It's very unfortunate. Well, back to 2018 we come. 12-7 for LDLC, anti eek around Maniac, the one to open things up on a kill to Borup in Banana towards a bomb site. It seems like that might be the, the bomb site that LDLC is looking to hit. Two first kills going for LDLC. Devil starts just spraying, doesn't really bother to try an eight. Alex trades the kill. Still full control for LDLC. Two CT players left and only Basso in the A-side to fight against the incoming terrorists. Basso is on the CZ. It can be very dangerous close range, but he only gets one. It's down to a &G now. He's with a dig, but he's far, far away. The short right now as the bomb gets planted on that A-bomb site. So winning a round at this point in time is out of the picture. This is more about trying to maybe obtain a weapon. Not a lot of money for North. Now they are getting 
full full loss bonus at this point so it'll be a full buy but you know any extra money you're able to save you obviously you want to here's a and j's chance but alex is wise to his flank gets the kill his third of the round and north academy now down 13 to 7 and this is starting to look good for ldlc now mm -hmm. yeah no i mean they, they've definitely been a much better team today than they were yesterday Especially on Inferno, their decision making was on point. Especially the first half. Obviously, the second half was a bit of a, a bit of a blunder. But the first half, they were on point. They were gaining a lot of the aggression towards the tail end of the first half. For example, the North was trying to throw at them uh, once they got desperate. So they have definitely been much more on point today. Early Yo. aggression towards Fountain, but Alex gets the opening kill, and no one is near Borub to help him out. He really overextended really far. That was a Hail Mary. Channeling his uh, his inner fur on that bit. round. Yeah. Fortunately, not a lot of players can really, you know, get to that level. It, it's also helpful to have Cold Zero backing you up. It does help, in, right? In the bomb side. It it's does not, help. It's not a negative. Definitely not, you know. You're willing to take your risk when you, when you have that backup plan. So 5v4 situation. North has a stack towards long. We got Cyclone waiting behind the wall with a core holding back from the site. This is the favorite op spot for just about every team's opper on this map. Just jumping around, trying to get information, looking towards banana bathroom and long. Now, this is going to be Alex just selling a fake while the bomb is actually making its way towards that B bomb site. So the optimal situation for LDLC if Alex just manages to get a kill, and that's going to probably cause a rotation from North, and then they just hit the B bomb right. And Basso is the player playing within Monster. But it looks like LDLC now, after rotating towards B, it looks like they might actually just run up towards A after throwing their nades into B. Alex is leading the way, as he usually is, as nice. the Lurker. And Alex has gotten all the way into the site. There's no one from North is aware of that. And he's surely going to get a kill here. But the problem is his teammates <laughs> are peeking first. It's so uncoordinated by LDLC. Two kills coming in for North. And now Alex still has a chance could be slicing that like Swiss here. cheese here. Gets that kill. He knows where Acor is. Sets a full back. That's the right call. But there's a couple of flankers coming in from the CT side through Banana. So now they're getting pushed in from two sides. Acor and Psyker are getting killed. It's all down. A maniac is going to go down. And somehow it is going to be uh, North coming up. That was, a, that was a big blunder from LDLC. Now, part of the problem is they were only able to sell that fake by using a lot of their utility into B, which is why they had nothing left to cover the staircase as they went into A, but they really needed Alex to at least hold that angle from the side where he was, because he was a very good angle to hold the stair staircase from before a car got up there and got to take a shot from someone running into the site. Well, North Academy are... Still fighting, fighting to get back into this. Still a massive lead for the, for the LDLC team as they are going to be pushing into the deep bomb side straight away through Monster. Basso here, five barrels. He's in prime position to get two. He gets them both. That's the bomb nullified. Alex manages to get the retaliation. And still, the numbers are favoring North heavily in this situation. The firing squad in heaven. And this is this is not going to be pretty. LDLC trying the uh, the fast Danish rush into the B side actually. That's the uh, we got the LDLC coach. Yeah, showing timeout. Si signaling timeout. Yeah. And there it is. Tactical timeout for LDLC who have now lost two rounds in a row. Still likely to be a buy the one person without a lot of money is devil. You can, I'm, something I've seen in this tournament is like the coach of LDLC. I'm not sure who he is exactly, but he's spending a lot of time with the, like individuals speaking about something. He's, he notices something, a tendency of some or something that he goes to speak on. The way he doesn't necessarily just talk to existence, but it's also the other players. So we take a look at the money for LDLC. This is likely to be a be a pistol save. Alex has tons of money, as do Toinu and Existence have plenty, but the problem is Devil and Maniac, neither can afford a proper buy. And when you're up 13 and 9, you still got a lot of, t lot of room to work with, and you wouldn't break necessarily break North's bank regardless, even if you won the round. It's probably not worth the risk of a full buy. What you want to do is get some pistols, get a couple of guns out of their way, and then hopefully break North's bank by winning two straight rounds 
which would effectively give you a very, very easy round in terms of the, the economy to close out the game at 15. Also see a saw a bit of frustration there from the other side. I think it was Devil who was back in the table with his fist after after lost the round. So I mean you're still up 13-9, you know, things are going your way. I mean it might be a little early for them to start getting frustrated. It's uh it's not a great sign, you know. I I just think his eye is stuck on the little too low on the scoreboard. Right? He's probably <laughs> looking at the, the number seven, which is his kill total, instead of the number thirteen, which is the round total which is the uh, more relevant metric exactly when playing a team game where success is measured in rounds. Frustration always settling in sometimes, of course. LDLC up to go for the buy, so they must think the North's, North's economy is actually worse than it really is. Yeah. Because North would still absolutely go for the uh, for the force buy after this. Now, you have to say Toynel had a great start to this game, but he's, he's kind of slowed down. No, safe, safe to say, I think he finished the, uh, he had some, he, I think he was 14 and 7 after after 10 rounds or so. Yeah. No, no he, was, he had 15 kills after 10 rounds. And since then, in the uh, in the 12 rounds that we played, not so much. So, I mean, he, he, he carried his weight early on, allowed LDLC to get the early lead. And, I mean, Alex has been, he, he's been farming, fair, fair to say. Yeah. But still gotten a lot of kills in the second half. Well, certainly now. We do see that majority of LDLC right now are close to the B-bomb so However, we still do have Alex here doing a bit of work towards toilets, and he, he might see some action here. Depends on the timing. And as you can see, action in the mini map. Potential push coming in here in Monster. It's going to be existence ready. He gets to those two kills, and that's going to be Q. The push is certainly coming in. Cyclone, though, he can be in prime position to stop this push. He gets one, but just only one. You would have thought he got more there. The HP is really low on both Dibble and Toino. But look on the other side of the map. You see the dot for Alex flanking all the da, way around. Da, We've da, seen Alex da, do this da, so da, many da. times this tournament. He's like a shark. No, man. Sharks just wreck things. They, you know, they don't <laughs> flank. Alex is gonna, he's but gonna see the Shadow though. of Borov gets the kill. Akar now the last man standing. He's by bathrooms trying to hold on to that AWP for the next round. And getting this final kill for LDLC is huge. Let's see if that happens. Alex is getting so close with the AK, chasing for that final kill, and surely he's gonna get it. No way, Car gets his second kill of the round. Toynu's the last LDLC player near him, and Toynu has such low health and an AW, AWP himself that he might not be able to commit to this chase, and he's gonna simply simply hold back. And that could that op could come back to bite them. Indeed, it could. Could be the shark. North going, going for a, going for a buy, as one would expect. Not a lot of money for LDLC, so it is a potential, potential eco economy breaking round. Two MP9s. Yeah. So not the greatest of buys, but you know, those can't get the job done. Interestingly enough, you have North here in Connector with a bit of a stack. You have the Op in Acor, you have Borob both playing in Connector. Just waiting for a play from LDLC, who are actually patiently right now just sitting back at Playground. They're Devil, 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 of course, in his uh, usual spot in uh, T spawn by area, <laughs> <laughs> where he's so often posted up on these anti eco type rounds. Now, Borov gets the close distance kill onto Maniac. So they know no now there's two players in connectors. So they're very expecting that the A side probably doesn't have a lot of CTs. Alex, he's just running in there. He, he saw one in bank, but I probably didn't recognize him. Cyclone gets the kill. And that's going to be the two-man advantage in the favor of North. Surely, but must be seen him. Now LDLC slowing down a little bit. Toyn is looking for a pick with existence, pushing into the side from long. And Toyn is just hoping for someone to peek, but Devil gets killed in B, and this is going from bad to worse for LDLC, who had all the control coming into this round. And Toynu misses a shot. Existence makes up for it. The bomb's down in the site, and Toynu left in a one versus three situation. This should be a hard one, barring any disasters from North Academy. He's going to be able to get the bomb, and even get the bomb plant, but there is a plant coming through Banana, and he should be seeing Toino any second now. He does. 
and surrounded is Tognil. He's gonna get down, and so that force buy is actually gonna work out in the favor of North. And now we see LDLC's money is in the dead vein. It's in shambles, isn't it? LDLC have no money left in the bank. They're gonna have to save, and that's gonna give North a chance to get right back into the game. Full save round, almost, for LDLC Alex and Devil, the only players to upgrade pistols. Everybody else holding on to the Glocks. Toynu, of course, very low on money. Alex and Devil were the ones with slightly more to spare. But this is this is getting into getting into little dangerous waters now for LDLC. You had a fairly almost a commanding lead, I would say. Mm -hmm. Things were looking sharp. Sure. But now you're letting North build up some money, get into it. Still not a lot of it, but these SMGs that Basso still has, if he gets any of these skills coming his way, are gonna help secure some extra financing going forward. Yeah, that core shoot is always great to have. Eight for it. With a shot connected on Devil and Maniac has gone down as well. Hold on, we know in existence now. Without not much to work with. Acor just can't tap the hit of Toynu. And smartly, they let Basso get the kill because he does have the SMG with a much higher kill reward. 14 11 now. Toynu still has almost no money, but surely LDSC will nevertheless... No, they won't no. go for the buy. They're actually actually going for the patient play, and I like this. Yep. Except call. for some reason, existence has... What? So I was going to say, I like the patient play. You get more <laughs> full weapon rounds out of this instead of forcing with just over 4k. But existence has for some reason bought up. Let's see if it pays off. We got Acorn in the smoke, and there's two early kills for LDLC. <laughs> We're just running over north with this odd semi buy. As you would expect. As you would expect, right? Well, Cyclone gets one back. Indeed, it's gonna be the retaliation. Managed to get that kill. And now things do slow down a little bit. Toyno has managed to get an AWP in his hands, so. Some extra weaponry in the way of LDLC. Maniac is in connector. Devil still almost in T spawn. Pretty spread around right, right now as LDLC. You just kind of want to see them bunched up. They have a molly, they have a smoke. So they can definitely take over a bomb site with those two grenades. And then force a bomb plant. Because there's only Cyclone right now who's. Just afraid of anyone flanking, actually. It's not even holding that A side. Oh, they had a stack going on. Didn't notice. There we go. That's finally gonna be the kill for him. Toy leading the push into the site. He's gonna get the bomb planted. Couple of smokes left for North, which could be dangerous for the retake situation. Indeed. Basso here coming up through connector. We've seen this build before. Oh. He somehow doesn't connect on the kill to Devil. And this could get tough. Now Devil has no help from his teammates, but he needs to get this kill. Basso and Devil now both low down to just about one HP. Basso eventually gets the kill. Toynu misses. Misses what should have been a free kill, but he instantly gets a CZ kill on the other CT left. Time is winning down. And now there's almost no time, but Toynu runs for the kill. No time left for the defuse, and that is tournament point. The awkward for LDLC. Tournament point. It's the uh, finals point, I guess. Yeah, tournament point for North. Right. There we go. Finals point for uh, for LDLC. There we go. There we go. We got that in the end. I, it, I was gonna. I was gonna just fast forward. <laughs> Call this the final. Why not? Um, but yeah, the awkward by actually working out for LDLC. The problem with those with the buys working out too is they do enhance they do uh, reward bad habits sometimes sure. and then you know some other most of the time probably not gonna work out but just this time LDLC now four map points to work with existence opens up with two entry kills on CT is pushing up and I gotta say North Academy playing aggressively towards A 
must have cost them at least three weapon rounds this half. Uh, in fact, I think that's the only way just about that they've lost rounds. Yep. This entire half is by going aggressive early on and giving LDLCs a chance to get a, get a couple of opening kills when they clearly don't have that much to fall back on otherwise. It's very true. Now, they are two players bunched up. Toilets and B, uh, A short. Banana. Trying to get info before the bomb side is compromised. However, they are two men down, so it's going to come down to these shots from someone like Acor to be connected. But at the same time, yeah, Toino ready and willing, he gets the kill. I think the hope is dwindling down now for the Danish side. And this is the kind of situation where LDLC just needs to group up, decide on a bomb spot, and just attack it. All five of them. Basso gets a kill on Toino. Gives them some hope, does a lot of damage to Maniac, but cannot get the kill. A and J gets one, but it's not enough. There's still three players remaining, two of them with full health. And A and J's switching to an op, trying to go for a pick here. Gets one, takes out Alex. There's two players left. Comes through the smoke, but he is right now surrounded. They should both just commit to the shot. One after the other, it's going to be LDLC. Picking that one up, it's a 2-0 scoreline, and they are going to be our first finalists here at the Aces ROG CSGO tournament. A little unfortunate for uh, for A and J that he didn't see. The, I, I don't think he saw the AK there on the ground in that 1v2. Could yep. have given him a chance, but at the same time, that round was all about over regardless. Good job for uh, good job by LDLC closing out the game. The uh, force buy turned out to be just what the doctor ordered. Indeed, yeah, I mean, you, in the you, end? Yeah, exactly. It felt like that was the weird buy, but like you said, in the long run, it just kind of gives you false hope in those situations when you sometimes, it would much more make sense for them to just be saving. But they capitalized, they win it. That's all that matters in the end of the day. What do we think of North, though? I mean, we, we could wrap up their tournament. I think still, especially yesterday, I mean, they, they sh showed signs. Never mind, we're going to the interview. Inferno. <laughs> August through no, Inferno. Uh, well, if I remember <laughs> correctly, I'm sorry. So, we have a game on Inferno that's very snowbally. Uh, if we start well, usually we end well. Uh, that's what happened. So it gave us enough room to make some mistakes a CT because I think we could have we could have closed it a little bit earlier. Uh, but because of that room we had from the T side, uh, that allowed us to close it. And then we went into the overpass. Tell us a little bit about overpass. Uh, well, actually, overpass was uh, much of a battle. It was really a battle. I think. Uh, our first CT sides were uh, first uh, CT rounds. I mean, they were very scrappy. Uh, we we managed to win a few clutches and rounds we could have lost, in my opinion. So it was extremely important we got those first rounds because they could have just uh, snowballed us. We could have had no money the whole side. I know they have a good game. I know they they have a lot of um, variation in their game. So we we survived. I would say it's beginning of the CT side, uh, but but our T side is usually our strong one on overpass. So. Oh, right. Uh, in the next semi-final, we have the Phoenix Hope Havu going against the Ukrainian Pro 100. Who would you want to face in the final? Uh, it's a mixed bag, I'd say. Uh, on one side, I would like uh, Havu to win. So, you know, they have a home crowd. I think it's always great for a tournament to have a local team. Uh, so, But on the other hand, I would like to get revenge on Pro 100 because they, they destroyed us in the group stage. And in the ego, it never feels right, you know, to get destroyed like this. So if we can get revenge, that would be good. But anyway, I'd be happy with any team. All right. Thank you. Congratulations once again. And on that note, it's our time to head into a break. Well, when we get back, it is a huge game. It is Finis Hope Havu going against the Ukrainian bear in form of Pro 100. So don't go too far away. <laughs> 